The night of June 17th to 18th, the Ukrainian defense forces attacked Russian oil depots in the Rostov region and Krasnodar region of Russia with domestically produced Neptune missiles. These facilities are located within the range of American Atoms missile defense systems, but the United States prohibits their use on the territory of the aggressor state. This is discussed in the analysis of the American Institute for the Study of War. They recalled that, according to the Sospilnoi publication, Ukraine modified the Neptunes to hit ground targets, in particular, to attack the oil terminal of Yugneftikimtransit LLC in the port city of Chushka, Krasnodar territory. The Russian Ministry of Defense did not confirm the strike, but said it intercepted a Ukrainian Neptune missile in an unspecified area. In addition, Ukrainian media reported an attack by SBU drones on the Azovsk and Azov Neftoproduct oil terminals in Azov, Rostov region. The fires there have not been put out for two days now. According to Ukrainian media, these oil depots together have 22 fuel tanks, up to 60 tons of petroleum products pass through them per month, and the tanks can simultaneously hold up to 30,000 cubic meters of petroleum products. Analysts noted that Ukrainian troops used Neptune missiles to strike an oil depot in the Krasnodar region because the United States still does not allow long-range weapons it provides, such as Atoms missiles, to be used to strike legitimate targets inside Russia. Because of these restrictions, Ukraine modified its missiles for two years while the occupiers enjoyed protection from Western weapons. The Russian Engels airfield can be turned to ashes by Ukrainian army after arriving of F-16s. With the help of long-range equipment on the F-16, the Engels airfield in the Russian Federation, which is located 600 kilometers from the border with Ukraine and where a significant part of the aggressor's military aviation is now based, can be turned into ashes, but now there is a political moment. Ukrainian military expert Pyotr Chernik said this during a telethon commenting on the importance of equipping Western fighters with long-range equipment, missiles, with a range of up to 1,000 kilometers. There is such a missile, AGM-158 JASSM, very good, long-range, up to 900 kilometers, heavy warhead, up to half a ton. We understand that the standard combat systems are Sikh, Fury. This is 50 to 70 kilograms of combat load, no more. And we remember that the strategic airfield in Engels, where the Russians still deploy the TU-95MS, is only 600 kilometers away. It really could be turned into ashes, and if they had burned a few more cars, it would have been would be a huge step forward. But there is a political point. The United States has not yet declared that exactly such a missile will be transferred. And for now, we have permission to operate deep into their territory exclusively with the HIMARS systems with standard M31A1 or M31A2 ammunition at a distance of 84 kilometers. But where there is a first step, there may be a second one, he said. According to Chernik, the transfer of the first F-16 to us will first of all help to truly change the situation in terms of adjustable aerial bombs. It's a very annoying problem. Up to 100 bombs of heavy caliber, FAB 250, FAB 500, and most importantly, UPAB 1500 are dropped per day. One and a half tons is very serious. They are dropped mainly by the Su-34 from a distance of about 40 to 70 kilometers from the point where the bomb is supposed to explode. And unfortunately, we cannot shoot down the bomb itself as long as we don't have such technologies, Chernik noted. As he explained, this bomb moves very quickly, moves diagonally, and the plane must rise very high, 15 kilometers. And this is a fantastic target for the AIM-120 AMRAAM missile, which in its best modification can strike at a distance of 180 kilometers. The F-16 can take on board up to six such missiles. If three to four missiles fly towards one side, it is doomed. Let me remind you, we shot down more than 100 Russian planes with Patriots in a given month. They would definitely stop using them because they can put no more than six units into service into a year. Chernik noted, 